I find his skill cap to be ridiculously low, and I hate heroes that <laughs> board people for standing still. For everyone just joining us in the stream, just want to catch everybody up to let you know, this is the SIVO Open preseason for Season 4. We're here on the Season 3 ticket, so if you have a Season 3 ticket, feel free to drop on in and grab yourself some items. Uh, my name is Gorgon the Wonder Cow. I'm here with Toffees. And, What's up? And we've already done our intro, so we're going to continue to jump right through the draft here with the Black Crows versus Five Manas. Wow, what a combo for Five Manas. Grabbing that Slark plus yeah. the Elder Titan. That is going to be rough to deal with. Black Crows grabbing the Nature's Prophet, presumably hoping to do a little bit of split push. Yep, definitely uh, Nature's Prophet. Great split push, though Slark, to a certain extent, really uh, a great answer for that Nature's Prophet. Slark's ability to move so quickly and uh, get to wherever Nature's Prophet is trying to put work in and can almost generally always solo him down before he can get out of there. So uh, it's gonna Black Crows is going to have a hard order if that's what they're looking to build to do. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how mm -hmm. Five Manless decides to handle that Nature's Prophet because they've already got the Slark. Slark is able to run around and works sort of like a Nyx Assassin on the board. However, the problem is they don't have a lot of push so far. They've got the Elder Titan, they've got the Slark, and that fills up a significant amount of the role. Presumably that Elder Titan is going to be a semi-carry, though he could run as a support, which means they basically have supports left. Uh, exactly. It's difficult to pick... Too many, unless you're going to grab yourself somebody like a Rasta Pugna support duo or something like that. It's difficult to get too much push, counter push just out of your supports without any assistance from your semi carries. Absolutely. So Alchemist picked up by the Black Crows. Uh, Alchemist, a hero that has not seemed to fall off very much since his big nerf in 6.80. Uh, I attribute that. I think the higher you go up in the skill level, the less the nerf matters in my opinion because of the uh, more skilled players ability to manage the reduced clock on the alchemist stun it still makes it one of the best stuns in the game even if you get it off with four seconds on it instead of five uh, it still is probably one of the best if not the best early game stunts yeah certainly is the changes they made to it makes it a little more risky especially since the countdown timer no longer continues to count while it's mm. in the air which means you've got to throw it at the point in time when you want the damage to be counted. It makes it a little riskier to, to pop that in a situation where you might not have vision in the jungle, for example. Especially as a roaming support can be a little tricky to land that stun. But because of the long duration and the extremely long initiation of that stun, uh, it, it is certainly one of the most potent early game skills in the entire game. Absolutely. And we do see the Pugna band out, so five manlets uh, worried about that push. Uh, how can you not be when Nature's Prophet and Alchemist are on the table? Alchemist, something we never talk about, even though he's got the best stun. That ulti also allows him to really never meet, never leave lane and soak tier one and two towers uh, without too much of trouble. Yeah, I really like this Doom ban coming out of five manlets, as well as the Pugna ban. They realize, A, right now, that silences are going to be their weak point. Boy, both Elder Titan and Slark are pretty cast dependent. So is Outworld Devourer. And we've got the Doom combo here, the Elder Titan and the Outworld Devourer, who were so popular hmm. about two months ago that just kind of dropped off. Five manlets still holding out the hope for these two heroes, grabbing both of them extremely strong in the early game. Absolutely. So I think uh, OD, I remember when OD was first banned almost every single match. Uh, it's nice to see him start to re-enter the game. The only downside to OD, in my opinion, is I feel like we don't get to see the action kick up in the mid lane as quickly as we do uh, when he's banned out. No, definitely. He is one of the few mid laners who really doesn't rotate at all. If you see an OD mid, you can be pretty confident that the farthest he's going to stray from that lane is to try and get a rune once in a while. He just needs to get his levels up, and he needs to get some gold up. So you usually end up getting a roaming support if you're going to have that OD, so that somebody is rotating. Um, Five Manlet's still very, very susceptible to a push lineup. Black Crows not really doubling down on that so far. They grab the Life Stealer. Alchemist is able to push pretty significantly, as you already mentioned. Nature's Prophet split push is significant. The Pugna ban kind of speaks to the fact that Five Manlet knows that a, a pushing lineup is really their potential undoing here. I, uh, how, how do you feel about that Lifestealer pick? Well, you know, I don't think Nature's Prophet is the traditional delivery method for a Lifestealer, uh, but I do like how he combines with Nature's Prophet to allow them a lot of flexibility on those pushes. 
Uh, you know, Nature's Prophet goes to push a lane with Life Stealer inside of him. Slark shows up for that easy gank for what he thinks is going to be, and it ends very quickly when Life Stealer pops out. Yeah, that is certainly a tricksy little move that you can do with the Nature's Prophet Life Stealer combo. You can also jump the Life Stealer, of course, into an Alchemist and have him charge in and bait in that way. But right now, you're right, they don't have a traditional delivery method for that hot plate of beef. <laughs> As it were. I think you just called Life Stealer a hot plate of beef. I did. I just kind of zoned out while I was reading one of my uh, my SIBO <laughs> chats here just to make sure that all of our levels were everything were all right. And I guess uh, Freud would say a little bit slipped out there from me. You know, he's a good looking guy. He has got. A, he might need a little bit of a jaw surgery, but other than uh, that. I was going to say you hang around the orthodontist and try to get him on the before. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, we move into the second round of our uh, second round of picks for this stage here, and it looks like five man is going to probably be picking up their support. What support do you think is going to work best with these guys? I would really love to see. Well, an Abaddon is an extremely strong support to go with the Slark. I was going to say something along the lines of perhaps a Rasta or Shadow Shaman would work really well with this lineup, just because it gives them two disables for one hero, as well as some push that they desperately need. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think disable something that they're definitely going to have to think long and hard about with their last pick. Yeah, they have the pounce, which is not a disable, but it does prevent somebody from moving. It's it's an initiation tool. They do have the disable coming out of the uh, stomp, the echo stomp. But... That's so hard. That's so hard to guarantee. That's kind of like a windrunner disabled. You know, it, it's a tough one to land. It's not only is it unreliable, but it only holds them in place while you while you set your heroes into the position you want them. It doesn't hold them in place while you beat the crap out of them. Black Crows are risking going extremely greedy, picking up the Razor as well. Wow. Now they've uh, got four semi-carries. Did not expect that. <laughs> yeah. Razor goes really well against the OD. Not quite as well against the Slark. But throwing that Razor mid, throwing the Life Stealer in the safe lane, the Nature's Prophet in the long lane, and then the Alchemist as a support, I mean, that all works out fine and dandy. You get all of your heroes in the lanes where they expect to be. But if these guys start to get rolled a little bit early, they are going to have a lot of trouble coming back. Of course, they do have the ability to go very, very late game as well. They do, but very, like you said, very farm dependent, uh, very early game dependent. If five manlets gets that Slark up and running and he gets some early ganks, Black Crow's going to find themselves in a terrible position. Yeah, Black Crow's desperately need, both of these teams really need some hard, reliable disable. The Alchemist disabled the most reliable disable on the board right now, and that's certainly not, I, I wouldn't bet money on an Alchemist being able to land an unstable concoction every time I need him to. Right. Um, and I, I, I don't see it happening, but five manlet picks up an Omni Knight here, and the Alchemist becomes completely irrelevant. Yeah, a VS for Black Crows would be an amazing pick. Not only would they have the swap delivery method for the Life Stealer, but it would also give them that hard disable along with the armor reduction and the damage boost for their entire semi carry team. That is true. So I, w I would not be surprised to see that pick up. Ancient Apparition grabbed by five manlets. Ancient Apparitions appeared a whole lot more in the last two weeks. Yeah, we see at every level play, too. Both the amateur leagues and the professional leagues and everything in between. Ancient Apparition been really picked up quite a bit more than I would have expected. His ability to globally initiate on teams and counter push and farm even a little bit from anywhere on the map makes him a fairly strong pick, but he is extremely fragile, and he does not have an escape mechanism meaning that you definitely have to have a team that is able to play buffer for him. They, that team needs to be out in front of him so that he can kind of support from the wings. He's not a support who likes to be in the fray. I agree. And, I, I mean, I think he's effective, especially when he has that Ag Scepter. The speed and the damage that he can do uh, with how often that ulti is up is horrifying. But they didn't pick up any stuns with that last pick. And I think that that could be their undoing in this game. Yeah, they do have the Cold Feet and the Ice Vortex. That will give them a little bit of ability to control some of these fights, but you're right. They have no reliable stuns, really, at all. Rubik, a pretty strong pickup here. The ability to, to get that telekinesis will really help the Black Crows punish any aggressive positioning coming out of five manlets. Absolutely. Uh, in, in addition, the ability to steal from Elder Titan is extremely valuable because he will almost always use Earth Splitter right at the end of his casting. And it's really easy to steal that spell. Not only that, but Natural Order amplifies damage in such a way. Well, there are those rockets. It amplifies damage in such a way that Rubik's uh, Null Field will completely mitigate it. 
Nolfield will actually save you 0.25 extra magic resist in your base character trait. So uh, it, it gets rid of a lot of the advantages that Elder Titan would have. I like that counter. Absolutely. I do think that uh, five man is, or I'm sorry, TBC is able to just, everybody should be buying a teleport scroll right now. And uh, if they have that, gank's going to be very difficult to land since they literally have nothing to cancel that. Yeah, let's go ahead and run through our teams real quick because it does look like we are going to have an aggressive tri lane here. It could be a lot of action. Why don't you go ahead and run through TBC while uh, we, these teams situate themselves? Actually, we'll start up top so that we can get back to the bottom. Up on top is TBC. Uh, Guzzi is going to be playing the Nature's Prophet. Over in the mid lane, we're going to have Hani, I suppose, playing the Razor. And then in the aggressive tri lane, we're going to have... Uh, I don't even know what that is. TBC finger sign of some sort. Rock <laughs> sign, maybe. Playing the Alchemist as he does a little rune watching. Lost in Hollywood playing the Life Stealer. And we are going to have Rubik being played by John John. All right. Four or five manlet. We are going to have the mid lane uh, Outworld Devourer being played by Cinco Hombre. In the off lane, where we've got Yellow Swaggin playing the Elder Titan. And for the defensive traveling, we've got Steric on the Abad, and we've got Siav on the Ancient Apparition, and we've got Banana Slam Jamma on the Slark. I have not cast Banana Slam Jamma in probably about five or six months, but he's a very fun player to watch. Excellent. I can't say I have experience with him, so I'll keep an eye on that one as well. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll a go fun ahead. name to cast as well. <laughs> I, uh, I have... I, I love to see the sportsmanship coming out of TBC, but... I have my doubts as to whether or not TBC is going to be able to really take advantage of this early game tri lane. They have two stuns and the slow coming out of the open wounds, but the defensive nature of this five man let's tri lane with the Abaddon and the slow and stun coming out of the Ancient Apparition are going to make it really hard for TBC to move in safely. Absolutely. So the. Uh I don't like seeing aggressive tri lanes unless I know for a fact that we're going to see a pretty good payoff from that. Uh, and able to keep out the opposing farm, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that. Yeah, this is... We'll, we'll have to watch. Uh, obviously, TBC is planning on moving in on this at some point in time here in the near future, so we'll keep our camera down here, more or less. Yeah, here they're already being harassed out of lane. So they lost in Hollywood. Uh-oh. Yeah, lost in Hollywood is taking a lot of auto attacks. He is going to go down for our first blood. So... Nice movement, good usage of that cold feet, and uh, Slark's ability to land that pounce. So, pounce kills life stealer. This is starting to become dangerous already. If you get that Slark going in really a snowball sort of fashion, this TBC squad may not have the opportunity to get the farm that they need in order to really take advantage of their heroes. <clears throat> All right. I'm not sure if I'm coming through on Dota TV, so I'm going to take a second and try to get that fixed. It's showing me a uh, mic sign with the X through it, so let me give me a I minute. I see. All right. Well, as we move through, we're going to see some more action in the bottom lane. There's the rage coming out of Lost with Hollywood, and he is going to be able to protect that Rubik for the time being. Very nice pounce, but it just was not enough in order to secure another kill. Outworld Devourer grabs an invisibility rune here in the top lane. And we'll see, we do see the vision is very similarly prioritized by these teams. We've got both teams prioritizing that bottom rune, and that is partially because both teams have their tri lane down here, which means that is the most important passageway. If a gank is going to come, it's probably going to come down through this way. As we're moving here, Banana Slam Jamma doing very well here in the farm. He's keeping up with the mid lane. The off lane one on one is also sitting at 9 to 9, it looks like. And so far. Not a whole lot of action up here. A lot of harass. Elder Titan's having a little bit of trouble with these Treants, but each Treant is going to give him 15 to 20 gold. So hopefully that will even out for him. And as we are moving through here, this bottom lane continues to have just... You can cut the tension with a knife. These... Teams, both of them want to move on each other, and you can see it in their posturing. The Alchemist is fading back just far enough behind where he can pop the Unstable Concoction without being seen. The Rubik is staying close enough to the Life Sealer to telekinesis up anybody who moves on. Meanwhile, Banana Slam Jamma is trying to make sure that you can actually see he's pointing his hero every time he runs in, he points his hero right at that Life Sealer. And he is going to fall back. There's not a lot of stack pulling going on here. There is the stack up, but 
Tiov deciding not to pull it this round since the lane is pushing forward on its own anyway. And there's a haste rune up that Alchemist is guarding at the moment, but he will be able to pick that up. He has picked it up, and he's going to try to rotate through. No, he's going to come back, and he has been spotted out by a ward. Five Manless is aware of what's going on here, and they are trying to fall back. He came by, and he's actually went to get rid of any warding here to block the camp, I think, but actually managed to find himself a sentry ward to get rid of. How will Devourer popping the invisibility room? We've seen... Uh, I, I, I do hear that you are back. There, I am. I am back. I don't want to interrupt you. Hopefully we got all of that straightened out with the Dode TV, and we apologize. This is our first cast of the season, and it is Toffee's and my first cast together, so we're just trying to work out all of the kinks as we move through this. It's both the Sivan Open and the Sivo Main for Season 4. Absolutely. It looks like Dota TV is back online with the voice, so we shouldn't have any problems there. Great. And uh, So last... you... Oh, go ahead. So I got to say, take a look, quick look at that last hit chart as we get ready for some action on the bottom lane. Uh, up on top, Nature's Prophet doing pretty well for himself up against this Elder Titan. Yeah, Nature's Prophet is a really strong... He's actually got, got Elder Titan trapped in. He's going to grab it with the ult. Very there nice play coming out of Guzzi. I did not expect him to grab that kill, but Elden Time just kind of hung around a little bit longer than he could. In the mid lane, we do see the Razor is stealing a ton of damage. He got 84. This uh -oh. Telkinesis and the lift, along with the Unstable Concoction. That's going to be all she wrote for the Outworld Devourer, who did not see the rotation coming. Nobody sees the 1 2 combo until they're flat on the mat. <laughs> and in the bottom lane, that does open up a little bit of space for the Slark to farm, though he has not been doing terribly anyway. The aggressive tri lane has not really been able to keep him off the creeps that successfully. He is sitting at 18 with basically right up at the top of the pack, with the exception of the Nature's Prophet, who's got 28. Nature's Prophet up against the Elder Titan. Very strong matchup for Nature's Prophet. He's able to harass with that with those treants. Absolutely. And he, he really is just dominating that lane at the moment. Uh, freeing up a little bit for Slark, like you said. But I don't think Slark's able to kind of keep up with him at this phase. How, what time do you want to see that level 6 out of Slark for him to start working those rotation ganks? Well, he's in the tri lane, so we probably won't see the level 6 until about 8, 8 and a half minutes. Uh, and we probably won't see the rotation right away. We probably won't see the rotation start coming out until he's about level 7 or 8. That'll give him an extra level of pounds and probably an extra level of essence shift. That will be very useful in those ganks. Absolutely, and I think that's one of oh, my problems with here in the bottom lane. We do see the unstable concussion land a banana slam jammer. He does not have the old. He does dark pack, and he has been given the aphotic shield. The aphotic shield protecting him as he grabs the kill on the Rubik. Now he's moving into the tower. The creep is hanging in the tower, and it does look like they are going to let TBC go with a warning on that one. Rubik going down, and bringing the score to two two. What were you saying before that engagement? Well, first I want to say that was one hell of a warning, but I was going to say that the. Uh, one of the things that I have, the problems I have with the uh, with these one position Slark is that I don't like the fact that it takes almost 10 minutes to get him out on his gank rotations. I like to see him up and running no later than that kind of seven and a half mark, uh, just to make sure you're holding down the other team's mid game. Yeah, the, a Slark really fits into a transitionary carry a lot better than a first position carry, in my opinion. Transitionary carry being any carry that gets going in the early game and then rotates into either ganking or pushing and allows another hero to take the bulk of the farm. Opening up and say a four for one strategy. A juggernaut, another great transitionary carry. You give him a little bit of farm in the early game, he gets that healing ward up, and then he starts rotating around and pushing while you get somebody else a little bit of farm as well. Absolutely. So if you look in the mid, it looks like uh, John John and F Rock Sign came in for a smoke gank, and uh, their timing was just unfortunate because OD decided to go check for the rune at that exact moment. Yeah, their smoke is about to wear off, and they are just sitting up here with their thumbs and their bums <laughs> <laughs> without a whole lot to do. They do see and an invisibility rune, though. OD did check the wrong side, it looks like. Absolutely. So it did work out for them to a certain extent, if only to keep that bottle empty. Yeah, they are losing a lot of experience sitting up here. And they're back. They want this gank to go through. I don't know that they need this gank enough. Honestly, even if they get this gank at this point, I don't know that it will have worked out for them. However, there is the move. Very nice Astral Imprisonment defensively coming out of single ombre, but it's not enough. He is probably going to go down here just to the auto attacks. That's 196 damage. Stole one uh -oh. more attack, and that's going to be of as well. He teleported into the wrong side of town on that one. Oh, nothing worse than that. So, yeah, he came in to help, and it just wasn't the right place to TP in. Yeah, the defensive Astral Imprisoned there worked out really, really well until you realize that Static Link was already off. 
Mm -hmm. Once you get that static link off, you really have to be worried about doing those defensive astral prisons. It would have been much better for him to take the damage from the plasma shield than it was to give all the damage from the static link. Exactly. So obviously that's Razor's such a great counter because of his ability to go through the imprisonment with the static link uh, and was able to collect, I I didn't see exactly how much, but I think it was upwards of 20 plus damage during that astral imprisonment. Oh, he got, yeah, he ended with 196 damage stolen. So, so there we go. Yeah, he probably stole a solid 50. That's, that's level four. So he's getting 28 per second, I think. Astral imprisonment, what is four seconds? So four seconds, yeah, you're yeah, right. Do, do the math, that's, that's almost a 120 or something like that. Oh, that's why I dropped out of school to be a caster. I don't want to do the math. <laughs> ah, the good old math craft. <laughs> Making sure you know the ins and outs of your favorite heroes. There's going to be a self stun on TBC down here. TBC, smiley face. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Dancing eyes. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's a, a glass of water that's full. We'll call him Optimist. Let's just call him Optimist. All right, TBC Optimist. Stunning himself and trying to look on the brighter side of things. <laughs> I love the Alchemist self-stun. Yeah. There was really nobody down here for him to stun either, but always the Optimist. He thought maybe someone would walk in. A nice pounce trying to go after the Rubik. Rubik has been slowed down, but Banana Slam Jamma uses his ult, and he's going to go away from the fight trying to get that Rubik. He manages to grab the Rubik. Meanwhile, his buddy has been cleaned up here. Both the Abaddon and the AA going down to Life Stealer. And the Alchemist, the nice courier snag coming out of the TP from Guzzi. Mm -hmm. And Slark is forced here. Oh no, no, Slark did go down away from he away did. from my screen. It who, ends up being a three it, it ends up being a three for one, actually. And I wanna a lot in a large part due to the greed of Slark going after that Rubik and sort of abandoning his two carries uh, to the opponents. Yeah. I uh, I would like to point out that not only is it nicer for the casters if fighters stay together so that we can see everything that's going on, but it's also good for your team. Your supports have to have a little bit of backbone. You need to be there sometimes. Wow. Razor tanking this damage. He's still tanking the tower. He's not worried about it at all. He uses the mechanism. He's got a nice long static link. That's 168 damage. One Jeez. hit down on the ancient apparitions. Banana Slam Jamma next on chopping block. There's the astral imprisonment. And they're going to re-engage on this, but Razor's ultimate is going as well. He's going to be able to take down the OD before he goes down. The Fade Bolt goes out. There is the Astral Spirit. A little bit of movement speed boost coming out of Swag and Swagon's coming in. There's one hit. Two hits out on the Rubik. One more should do it. There's the Pounce, and that is another kill. That is a three-for-one swap. Four or five manlets, despite the fact that that Razor had... 224 at the time of his death. Woo! That is a lot of damage stolen. It takes some big cojones to go head to head with a 224 Razor. Yeah. Five Manless <laughs> did lose a tower on that as well, but all things considered, I think that they can be pretty happy with that trade. Absolutely. We do take a look at the gold graph here as we pass the 12 minute mark. It is a little bit in favor of TBC. It looks like after it updates, it'll be about 6,000. So that's a fairly significant lead, but certainly not insuperable. By Abs five minutes. Absolutely. Elder Titan does have the mech on his way out to him, and Life Stealer did just pick up uh, his hand of Midas in addition to, I don't know if you noticed, Nature Prophet picked it up, uh, I think, about a minute ago or so. Yeah, that's this is a very rough line lineup to be going against a double hand of Midas. We've got the absolutely. hand of Midas on Nature's Prophet and on the Life Stealer. They already have the better late game. Five Manless really needs to double down on this mid game and absolutely dominate. If they start to lose control of this game, they will never be able to get it back. They just do not have the late game. Elder Titan will fall off eventually. Getting items on him does not get him into late game potential. He basically goes up with his levels and then a little bit farther with items and then stops. He stops becoming useful at that point. Absolutely. And obviously we all know Slark, one of the biggest snowballs in the game. And right now he's not really getting the chance to start that snowball. Oh, very nice ward. The sentry ward allows that static link to be cast. Alchemist just trying to get rid of that unstable toxin before he self -sums. A nice blast of field going out as well, hitting four with the ultimate nature's wrath coming out and doing a fair amount of damage. Elder Titan throws out his ultimate, grabs the Alchemist. Alchemist is going to go down to the Slark. Outworld Devourer's auto attack actually grabs that last hit. Elder Titan can't move. He's taking some auto attacks. Symphonic Shield trying to keep him up. There's another plasma field. The Outworld Devourer doing the defensive. Imprisonment, oh which costs his Elder Titan a life potentially. And now Banana Slam Jamma is in here fighting three, but OD coming and dropping down the hammer. Doing a little bit of damage. That's a three for two so far. Rubik has managed to grab Sandy's Eclipse. Unfortunately for him, his intelligence is just not high enough for that to really be relevant for against most of the heroes. Yeah, 
He's got well, a lower intelligence than three of the heroes of the opposing team. And that was a disaster for five mana. The reason I want to say that is, I don't know if you noticed again, but Slark started the fight here, migrated up, followed Rubik around the secret shop, left him at a quarter health here, and then ran back in as the fight ended. Yeah, they're doing a really, really good job of dissipating this Slark's effect in the team fights by chasing him out. He is just basically being kited all over the map while the rest of his team tries to support him but is unable to get through the blockers. It's, yeah, it's very dangerous place for you to be if your carry has eyes a little bit bigger than his stomach and allows himself to chase up. Yeah, you'll get that Rubik kill, but at what cost? And in that situation, he didn't even get the Rubik kill. So um, <laughs> I assume his team must have been screaming, come back, we need help, banana slam jamma. And uh, he arrived a bit too late. And that is one of the things that, as I said at the beginning of the game, Banana Slam Jamma, a fun player to watch. One of the reasons is because he is one of these balls-to-the-wall sort of players that likes to make big plays, likes to get in. But that does get him in trouble sometimes, and it has been getting him into a lot of trouble this game. Absolutely. So, nice Sentry Ward down at, right in the mid there, so Hane can get his free farm, no issues. And look at this Crete, look at this Ancient stack. Yeah, that is a pretty significant stack. And Alchemist it looks like he's going to farm that out himself, get himself into a semi-carry roll. He's got no stacks of Greebles greed up, but no, he's just going to knock him down a little bit with Acid. He might not actually be farming this all the way up. He might mm. just be weakening them, though. No, he will. He will be taking this gold. Absolutely. That's... He's the last hero on TBC that is not out farming five manlets, basically. And I'm going to assume that they really want to get their hands on that medallion. Yeah, an early Roshan here would kind of cinch the deal for them. Five manless having... Oh, very nice uh -oh. Nature's Prophet. Boy, the mid tower is being sieged here. No responses coming out of TBC so far. Scouting going out with the Astral Spirit. And that tower is going to go down. There is no deny. And at this point in time, Lifestealers run into the fray. He's trying to take down Stair. There's the AAL. It manages to hit... Nothing. It looks like Life Sealer was raged up at the time. So that AO, kind of a little bit of a whiff, but Five Males able to get out with the tower. What a great move for them. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I I can't I don't understand why we didn't see a rotation over there for, there from the ancients when that tower push started. Yeah, I have no idea. They were just really horse blinders. Um, they were dead set on going to the finish line and those ancients and didn't want to leave the stack i guess getting rid of that mid tower would be a much bigger deal if they weren't about to get the roshan but one of the most important reasons you want that mid tower is because it is the quick tp point for roshan rotation from the dire side there's the aao but nobody's really low enough for that to be effective as long as alchemist doesn't let himself tank this for too long yeah there we go Oh, oh pounce. Slam Gemma over pounce and getting himself caught up on and he's going to give away all his damage he's Going to go ahead and use the Shadow Dance just to try and get himself away, but look at this. 224 damage stolen, and Banana Slam Jamma is going to get himself hung from a stout tree there. And now, they're going to chase down after everything. Nature's Prof Nature Prophet is going to teleport in between the entire team, and here's going to be self stun from the Alchemist. So, huh. uh, they got a two, two kills and a self stun for nothing. Yeah, and uh, also an Aegis on the Life Sealer, and they're going to push a tower here as well. Five Manless is in a world of hurt right now. This is exactly what we were talking about. That one moment that they could not afford to give up, mm -hmm. that was it. That was the moment. That was it. Now, it. I wonder what Alchemist, like I said, was doing with those Ancients. They didn't actually go for the Medallion on him. Uh, they just farmed it up, so I still haven't quite figured out what he's trying to get his hands on. I suspect he's going to rotate himself into a second carry roll. This, this TBC squad really seems like they just absolutely won dominate. There's the static link up on the OD. OD's unable to get away. He tried to force that, but it was unsuccessful. Wow! A maximum duration static link. That's another 224. One more attack in AA, and that's going to bring him down. Meanwhile, Lifesteller is attacking the uh, Abaddon, but Abaddon has his ult up. A Photic Shield goes up, and that protects him. The Razor takes a stun from the AA. But he is outside of tower range. He's going to go ahead and use the plasma field. He's still got a bunch of damage stolen. And he's going to go after the Elder Titan up in the tower. He has been tanking towers left and right this game. And it looks like he might trade off his life again for the privilege of doing that. He's going to turn around and try to static link. The spirit goes out. A stomp attempt started, but it was canceled. Banana Slam Jamma coming in after Stannon, who's ruining around <laughs> the jukes. The <laughs> Oh! The he, Dukes! He dodges the bounce. Here's the AAL. He's going to skirt around the bottom end of that. There's a, oh my god, the Sprout protects him! And now, Uzi 
he's gonna try to teleport away, but he has been pounced. He is gonna trade off his life. Saving the razor though with that sprout. What a play, <laughs> the jukes. <laughs> the jukes out of that guy. It was like watching a professional boxer bounce back and forth. That was, uh, yeah, Muhammad Ali in his prime. I I do want to point out that Alchemist, uh, during the retreat, was caught out and taken down right over there in the jungle. Ah, I did not catch that, but that helps five manless pretty significantly. I don't know what TBC was thinking. They have a late game team. They don't need to really feel this much pressure to get this done. Uh, they, they're diving in behind tier ones. They really just want to be making plays, I think, for the audience. Yeah. That, that seemed more like that seemed almost more like a cockiness pride throw than anything else on that yeah. one. Yeah. That, but that, no, hey, I, I'll never, I'll never get mad at a team for trying to make a good show over on the stream. Yeah, exactly. Helping out the uh, casters, making a nice show, and it wasn't that big of a throw off for TBC. They're still in a very significant lead. They're sitting at twelve thousand gold. They're sitting at uh, about six thousand XP. Both of those are pretty important for the appraisal of who's winning this match, and of course they're way up on towers. So as Absolutely. long as they manage to hold down a pretty decent uh, grasp this game. They don't do too many of those dive-in throws. They'll be in pretty good shape. If you were five manlets right now, what do you think your course of action would be? Right now, I think five manlets' best bet is A, they're going to have to stay together. They're just getting smoked when they try to spread out. Slark's ganking is not panning out for them. Uh, so I think they just need to get those tier one towers down, try to control some of this movement coming out of TBC, and uh, get at least one good team fight in. And we do see now, yeah, it is a semi here. Actually, Banana Slam Jamma is going to jump in. He's got the pounce on Sam and Hain. Hain going down again. This uh, Razor has been making huge plays, but he's also, all three of his deaths seem really unnecessary. Two of them from tanking towers and one from being way out in the middle of nowhere. They're going to try to turn this into a tower themselves. And, you know, that may be it. It might be that Five Man needs to figure out that Razor is sort of playing his own game right now, and that could be their ticket to get back into this. If they can pick him off again and turn it into tower pushes, they're golden. I do want to point out Razor is a stand-in and doesn't normally play with TBC. Yeah, and also the nice thing here, Banana Slam Jamma doing very well for himself, and he's going to grab this Rubik in the base. He's got himself invisible. He cannot be seen, and now he is very deep in trouble. He's going to pounce into the woods and TP. Very Absolutely. nice play from Banana Slam Jamma. Meanwhile, his team, he ran in, distracted the entire TBC squad who were chasing him around, and his team almost managed to grab an entire tier two tower in that time. Lawson Hooliwood coming in. He's got the rage up. He's trying to attack CFC. He's trying to teleport away. He's been sprouted in, but it's not enough. He does get away. TBC Steric. Trying to take after him, but yeah, he's able to get away as well. And there's another self sun coming out of Optimus. And that's what we talked about the ability for uh, five man just to really carry TP scrolls with them and get out whenever trouble starts. Yeah, Optimus had that. <laughs> he had that unstable concoction working, and he was trying to save it for, I think, max duration. He I think could... it, I think it had just come off of cooldown ah. because he popped it, and I believe he doesn't use auto target perhaps. And uh, a 0.5 second delay is exactly what it would take to target. The person he was trying to stun. I see, I see, I see. Very nice catch. And yeah, instead of taking a tier two tower, they give up a tier two tower. Five man, this says, but they are going to try to reinitiate here. Goosey goes down once again. Banana Slam Jammer running in. He does have his Shadow Dance up as well as a pounce. He pounces way off to the side. A little bit of miscommunication between him and his pathing, I believe. Meanwhile, down here, we do see Elder Tiny go down and Austin Hooli were trying to attack down Steric. Steric has his ult up in one second and it goes down before he's able to use it. And Banana Slam Jamma does manage to grab his Rubik, his favorite prey. He uses the Shadow Dance, and he's moving back. But once again, he's off on his own while his team loses two heroes. That's a huge distance to be away from the team during a fight like that. Yeah. That was... That, that is modus operandi for this Slark. And the only time it's really paid off is when he dove way into the base and almost got a tower as his team pushed. But... For the most part, he's been trading off his teammates' lives for the luxury of dancing around with his enemies. And I'm really starting to wonder if maybe he has a personal problem with the guy playing Rubik right now. Because <laughs> he will literally go into the depths of hell to kill that Rubik. And almost all of his kills in that in those situations have been Rubik-related. Remember me, buddy? I'm coming <laughs> for you. What did I do? You know what you did. Oh, Banana Slam Jam up here with Hain. Hayne's got a lot of support nearby, though, and Banana Slam Jamma is going to back himself off. That is the right call. He would not live long. And a smart back off, too. He doesn't have any vision in that jungle and uh, would not have been able to see any of those supports. So the temptation to pounce was high. 
Yeah, the TBC's vision in this game has been vastly superior to mm -hmm. five manlets. They've been having a lot of trouble getting the supports out far enough to even drop wards. They ha they've they consistently had wards on their heroes, and we're going to see some action up here as Vanessa and Jammer runs in. After the Rubik again, he is going to grab this kill. One more hit, and that'll do it. But he is probably going to go down for the chance. He does not have Shadow Dance in pain. Once again, a max duration steal of 224 damage. He's going to give the entire five manlet squad a run for their money. 224 damage. One more attack on Sarek, and he goes down as well. An explosion of guts. They're going to grab a tower, at least one tower, probably two towers. I would not be surprised to see a GG call right here. Absolutely. So that was a wonderful five-man win for TBC. Uh, I mean, that really was going to be, if we go back and say turning point in the game, I'm going to go ahead and predict that that was it right there. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I'd say that's more of a cinching point than a turning yeah. point. For, for TBC kind of has had this. It's been their game to lose for a little while. But that's true. I, I would say that, that, yeah, that's obviously the GG moment where you see that fight and outside of any extraordinary historic comebacks, Five Manlets is not going to be able to come back from that one. Yeah, that uh, that Razor just tearing apart those barracks right now. Yeah, there's they're going to back out. They're not even going to rotate in on these barracks, but honestly, they could. I don't know that Five Manlets has anything they could do to stop it. The Slark is coming up now. He's still a little bit scary. He's got a mm. Shadow Blade up, but I don't know. That Slark is not... We're down to racks, and we still have a two Tier 1s up scary. He is going to go after the... <laughs> He is going after the life sealer. Who can see him because of the sentry ward? Life sealer rages up, and he's just going to TP home. No Absolutely. reason to faff around with banana slam gamma when he's off by himself. Very smart Absolutely. TP. Well, and Stark, you know, he does have that Shadow Blade, but you got to look at the builds over on the side of TBC right now. They have the Necro 3. They just got a Desolator on that Nature's Prophet. Basher, Bracers up on the Life Stealer. Uh, and then obviously the Heaven's Halberd up on the Alchemist. So that yeah. was what he was farming for. Yeah, and that's, I was going to say that earlier, but we got stuck in the team fight. That was the semi carry item that they decided to go for. Very smart pickup against the Slark. Slark, if you hit him with that Heaven's Halberd before he goes into Shadow Dance, he really is just using Shadow Dance for positioning. He's not able to use it to steal a whole bunch of your stats and become a scary monster. Absolutely. Here's another engagement here by Roshan. Siav taking a lot of damage. He's going to get the Aphotic Shield. But Dance Slam Dammer has been stunned out. And he almost goes down and gets the Shadow Dance up, it looks like. And he's going to come in and pounce here on the OD. OD going down. Or he pounced at the OD, but OD's on his team. I'm not sure why he was pouncing over in that direction. But Sam and Haynes some trouble. taking a lot of trouble here. He's got a fair amount of damage, though. And his ult pumping out a ton of damage as well. Static Link is up, but he's not using it. He's just going to kill. Uh, he's going to kill Bad in the old fashioned way. Then he's going to kill Slark the old fashioned way with 47 health. Oh, oh, he's getting... And he's going to keep going. Oh <laughs> my gosh. There's wow. the GG. And how could you not? How could you not let the game roll until that Sandin had his moment of glory? If you're going to talk about playing margins, you got to talk about Hain. That was. A great way to end the game. Very Absolutely. exciting. So, this is a best of three. So, coming out of this game, what do you expect to hopefully see five man? Let's do a little bit differently in the next game to give themselves a little bit more.